welcome to And All Shall Be Well. My name is Megan Rohr and I am your host. Today, I'm thinking a lot about people who take on jobs, not just because it's something that needs to be done or because there is a paycheck, but because they are motivated by making the world a little bit better, doing a job that will cause harm to themselves or lead to backlash because they're stronger and older and able to take it when the younger people they're supporting maybe cannot. Gael is a nonprofit leader and someone who's working with young people and doing it in a way that brings courage and support to other people. And one of the things that I think is inspiring about this role that they've taken on is that they are wading through fear and doubt and things that are hard, but doing it in ways that seek to shield and shelter other people. It's not something everyone is called to do in their work, uh, but for those who have taken it on, there is a special kind of bond, I think, that happens when people who regularly get made fun of publicly or shamed or assumed to be at their worst are able to have conversations together about how to stay well. And so this conversation is one that is coming from a deeply rooted place and is such a sign of, of strength, I believe, for people to be able to have conversations that acknowledge the ways that we wade through the hard and the ways that we're trying to make the world better for the next generation. I hope that this conversation inspires you to think about ways that you have definitely waded through the hard sometimes, even if it's not in the same ways as Gael but that you have made it through to a new place. Sometimes you've learned lessons about where you're never gonna go again, and other times you come through with bonds and love and support that you never would have found if you hadn't taken a journey like this. So enjoy this conversation. Hello, my name is Gael Nala Chavez. Hi, everyone. Um, I use they, them pronouns, and I am 44 years old. And what are some of the ways that you self-identify, just so people can have some touchstones for who you are? Um, well, I have so many different intersections, but I identify as trans, non-binary, um, I identify as a parent. I identify um, I'm a first generation uh, Mexican immigrant. Um, I am partnered. I've been married for about 15 years. Uh, I'm a, yeah, I'm a parent and I, um, I'm in the nonprofit sector. And I wonder what, what are some of the um, kinds of experiences those are those are sort of a lot of intersections that are sort of bubbling in our culture right now. Are there parts of your intersection that you think could give people sort of a, a touchstone into imagining like what it's like to to be in your shoes? You know, I feel like you know, growing up poor, growing up low income. I didn't mention I'm also the youngest of seven, raised by a single parent, and so my entire lived experience has been marginalize and so those are those hot hot button words right that have been in existence for such a long time i feel like um all of my intersections have been layered and i carry on my back along with all of the various ancestors that are protecting me and also that generational trauma what they're bringing that i carry on a daily basis and so um I, I'd say they are all woven in every aspect of how I interact with this world um, at different points in time. And so I remember a time, you know, you know, before I was married and before I had children, 
where my immigrant experience was at the forefront because of what was happening in the country um, and what was happening with the border. And as a, the only person in my family that was born in the United States, I've always had like an extra layer of responsibility. Um, and, you know, as a parent now, I feel like my identity as a parent is kind of front and top center, really figuring out ways to parent my children differently, to, um, yeah, parent my kids differently, to, to actually create new traditions that are um, healthier habits that perhaps I didn't experience as, a, as, a, as an immigrant, as a you know, poor child. Um, creating space where they are able to kind of thrive. And so I feel like though that identity as a parent is, is, is bright and center. And then with everything that's been going on in the world, anti-trans legislation and just the daily attack on our community has been so traumatizing and so difficult to kind of deal with that that's, for the past, I would say, three or four years, that has been front and center. From the moment I wake up until I go to sleep, I think about how do I take care of myself? How do I move forward? How do I create a space where I will survive? And how do I create space for others in my community to lean on so that we can kind of hold hands and kind of move forward? Because it, it is hard. It is hard what we're all dealing with. I, also, at the same time, I feel like I do have a sense of privilege. Um, as I, I do feel like I've always been a resi resilient person. And so I have a sense of pride in the fact that I, I, I hold privilege. I'm able-bodied. I'm a fluent English speaker. I'm educated. I have a job. I have a roof over my head. Um, and so I feel like there's also so much joy and so many things that I that I am proud of. Well, and my, my experience of you is that you are someone who is a leader, not only in your, in your nonprofit, but in the, the community that, that you are participating in and living in and that, that you have navigated times and spaces that are not safe, but instead of just kind of going into a turtle shell, you sort of are like reaching out to try to make sure everyone in the community is safe and kind of knowing that you're from a family of seven, I can see where that might come from. Um, but I wonder if, if you have a sense of like where some of that internal fortitude and strength uh, centers in you um, and how that res resilience has bubbled up. I mean, I have to, I mean, I think it's, um, I grew up in a community. I think it's the, um, you know, the Mexican community, the immigrant community. It's like, you know, we all support one another is, I mean, when you grew up in a community where like it takes a village, I feel like those were my first kind of role models. My, my mother really is another role model where, I mean, I remember early on as a child where she would say things like, you know, how many, how many pairs of shoes do you have? I had like six, for example, at the time. she's like, okay, keep two or three that you, that you use all the time. And then the other two or three, we're going to give away because so-and-so, you know, lost their job and, you know, they took some shoes. And so like, I just remember early on embedded in my mind that like, it's not just about me. It is also my community. It is also my family. So this, this idea of like community has been big in my upbringing and, and thinking about how do we continue to create safe community? How do we continue to create safe spaces, coalition, bonding, protection, safety has always been just part of my personal, personal journey, which, which it comes up in, in, in my work, work life as well. Well, just know that I'm appreciative of it. And, and 
I'm <laughs> when I've been able to kind of like float in and out of the the work that you're doing. It it's very inspiring to see the way. Oh, thank you. Appreciate are. that. My my internal sense is that sometimes when it's the hardest for me to sort of like stay afloat with my own wellness, it's often like refilling and and really for me to like still be reaching out and being like okay well what i'm learning from what it's hard right now i'm going to immediately apply to everyone in the surrounding area and i sort of feel like i see that in you as you're as you're navigating through the world for sure yeah how how do you care for yourself and for your wellness these days or or the ways that you're trying to to piece it together on the fly well, that's the struggle. I mean, I think when you think about how do I take care of others? How do I focus on others? I mean, I, I, I don't typically, I don't have a robust practice in taking care of myself. I think this idea of like self-care and self-protection is a new thing for me. I've, I've carried a lot of guilt for so long. I feel like I'm almost like selfish trying, having to take care of myself. And I don't know where that comes from. I have no idea where that comes from. But it, it is something that I've struggled with. Um, but honestly, in the last, I would say in the last couple of years, I have noticed my body actually reacting to my lack of self kind of protection, you know, um, and care. And so I've begun to to do things uh, to to take care of myself and you know I, I i can't preach sustainability of our my the organization i work with there's the sustainability and growth of our community if i'm not doing that for myself or even with my own family and so i do little things um like for me joy is a big big thing and so um finding times to laugh finding times to just enjoy just happy moments, whether it's with my kids playing with them or with my wife or with friends um, or with my, you know, just extended community that just gives me, gives me so much. And then um, food, food is always really helpful. Resting, um, hiking. I've always been a good hiker. I've, there's something about just walking um, that clears my mind. Um, and then, you know, when my sister passed away in 20, uh, in 2009, I struggled, struggle a lot with mental health. And so I was introduced to, um, meditation at that time. And I began, I was, had a really big practice then and it has fallen through the cracks just with like my busy life. But I have found that in, in times where I have been stressed or unable to find comfort um having going back to my mindfulness mindfulness practice has been has been key well i think in my own in my own personal journey i have found like i started on a similar kind of space as you where i really felt like self-care was selfish particularly because it felt like if i would take day off the homeless people wouldn't eat that day and like just because i was uh -huh. i was running a lot of like smaller uh non-profit food stuff and things really would like just not get done if i left and and so i had this kind of ingrained like oh you just have to like set it aside because so many poor people need need stuff than you and and as i've kind of been farther into my trans journey, I think part of what I'm discovering is that the external narrative of the world really tries to lie to trans people and gender non-conforming people and say, if you, if you honor your truth that you know about yourself, you are harming the world. So you should ignore your own truths mm -hmm. and just moving forward. And it does a lot of harm to our, our community in general, particularly when folk aren't able to move forward because they can't honor themselves. And, but I, I, I try to remind myself when I'm doing self-care that like I am actively countering transphobia when I honor my body and try to care for it. 
question. Okay. And, and I'm clearly not perfect at it, especially if you if you assess wellness by how often people go to the gym or, or do that kind of stuff. But I'm doing the little bits that are mine to do, which I think is about that's that's what I got right now. And tomorrow I'll try to do better. Um or my body will will maybe punish me if I don't. But um, but I feel like just trying to learn how to listen to my body and like it took me until I was maybe twenty five to figure out that if I have too much milk, it makes me have sinus infections a lot, right? And I just ignored it and ignored it and ignored it because of the patterns and ways that I had taught myself to ignore when my body was not okay, right? And so I feel like there is this whole adult level that I'm a, a toddler in that is like learning how my body in particular wants to be able to navigate as they go forward. And, and so that's, that's part of the journey that I'm on. Does, does that relate to where you're? Where you're oh, yeah. One thousand percent. I find it so liberating. When you're able to take some of that power back by when, when you're taking care of yourself, like. Even something simple like taking a nap in the middle of the day, which just feels so like, oh, who does that, right? When you have so many things going on. But if you do it 30 minutes later and you feel rested, you're, it just, your body, it, and you can, your body just says, thank you. It is so liberating and so powerful. And I, yes, absolutely. It's like we're taking, we're chipping away at taking our power back. We're chipping away at liberating not just ourselves, but our community. And we're chipping away at getting rid of that guilt by taking care of our bodies. And, you know, for me, I feel like as somebody that works in a youth serving organization, um, I say this to my team all the time. We are mentors, role models, and teachers of the next generation. And if we are to change the needle and really create a new generation of Every what what of just productive humans and happier humans and joyous humans, then it we actually have to model that because if not, it's just going to be this continual you know thing that we're going to do. And so we have to change this I, this notion that we don't deserve self care, that we just in it we have to have boundaries. And there is guilt to sometimes having those boundaries. Like no, it's it's okay. It's okay for you to take care of yourself. It's okay for you to rest. We deserve it. We deserve to honor our bodies. We deserve to nourish our bodies. Um, and that's just been a new thing because I real I it's almost like I will get judged. People will respect me more the more that I do. And actually, no, sometimes people will respect you more by role modeling healthy boundaries, by role modeling, you know eating just nourishing food and things like that and so that's where as a parent as well you know for me it's like I want my children I want the youth that I work with to just have healthier habits because guess what that is going to sustain them that is going to allow them to respond to their world in a more effective way and that is going to literally give them that energy that they need the fuel that they need to combat the injustices that we're dealing with right like we can't we can't be we can't target these injustices by running on empty so take that nap yeah and for those who who maybe are listening and can't see you right now will you tell people what your shirt says oh yes drink water love all fight racism right now if that's not everything on the list well there's probably a couple more but yeah our our spouses might have a long list. yeah that's a good one <laughs> Yeah, 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 yes. Uh, is there is there um, anything that like if you were going to like imagine imagine your kids were here or my kids were here and we were going to tell them like this is the the one thing I want you to know about like wellness. What what do you think it would be if you had to just give them like one little nugget? Yes. Oh man. I feel like they, my kids actually take care of themselves way more than I do. <laughs> so I, I feel like they teach me. Um, 
So I, that's what I would do. I, I would say, thank you for just being so good at taking care of yourselves, um, for eating healthy foods, drinking a ton of water and, um, just being so positive. Keep doing that. And what I would say is like, keep doing that because when you become a grown up, it, it's going to be harder. And so keep doing the things that you're doing now as a kid, because actually as grownups, I wish I was still doing some of those things. So play, drink water, eat good, and just like be friends with everyone. Yeah. I also have found, uh, I don't know if your kids are like this, but my kids have, have been in schools where they don't have to sit still and, and listen in the ways that I was taught to sit still and listen, which can be infuriating when I'm trying to tell them something, but every other moment of the day is fantastic. But I feel like I find myself like where just half of my day is like, oh, how can I move different? Because I sat so still that like my body doesn't want to work now and it's and it's achy. And I watch my kids and they're just like, oh yeah, it feels weird. So I'm going to move right away. And then it, they don't like at the end of the day, they don't have that same kind of like grumpiness that I might have had by just like pretending human beings are supposed to be still and listening and not adjusting when their bodies ache. And so I think, I think you're onto something that, that we should just observe, observe and like write things down. Like we're mad scientists. I feel like there's so much that we can learn from young people, from kids I mean, they're just so compassionate. They're so welcoming. They're happy. They they love all. You know, you know, just like it's it's once they get older and you know the, their parents, and just their community that they, you know, all these other things happen. But I feel like we almost have to go back to the basics. Is there is there anything that we haven't chatted about that you want to make sure that? that you have a chance to share? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just say that, um, I mean, when we think about wellness, when we think about self-care, um, there's just so many like catchy, catchy things, catchy activities, catchy words out there. And it's just not really a reality for everyone. We don't know, like, I don't know your listeners. They're all different lived experiences, different, you know, incomes, ages, abilities and so for me it's like find one is forgive yourself and just allow yourself a nugget of some freedom and power to to take care of your body and, and your mind uh, and there's no judgment like don't have judgment so if for you it's like a walk or a nap or a meal, or maybe it's a nicer meal. <laughs> you know, just, it doesn't have to be the spa, right? It doesn't have to be something. But I, I do think there is a level of like, you know, let's take this power back. And it looks differently for every person. Um, so I'll give you an example. I wake up maybe 30 minutes or 45 minutes before anyone in my family gets up because I just want that silence that time alone because I don't get it at all and everyone in my family's like that's crazy so like at 5 30 I'm like just sitting on the couch by myself with no noise and something like you're up at 5 30 in the morning like yes because that is my silence and then when everyone wakes up I've been up I've already had my coffee I'm like way happier and so do whatever you need at whatever time and don't apologize. And I think just that little nugget is going to pay you forward. And taking care of yourself is going to make the rest of your family grateful that you're less grumpy. And, and the whole world is going to look different if you're able to kind of enter it in a, a less, a less pain filled or frustrated way for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you so much and I appreciate all of the work that you do. And um, this, this is sort of a tiny a snapshot of, of who you are in the community, but I'm grateful that for some people, they're getting an introduction to know you a little bit better. And if anyone is interested in reaching out, is what's the best way for them to do that? 
feel like email works really great for me. Um, again, my name is Gael Lala Chavez. You can reach me at G-A-E-L at lyric.org, L-Y-R-I-C dot O-R-G. Um, yeah, just email me. And, you know, if anyone is, uh, you know, wants to connect, wants to talk, work, life, parenting, you know, I'm, I'm an open book. Thank you for listening to our conversation. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it inspires you to take a little bit of time to care for yourself through meditation, through loving others, and through care for your community. This conversation and others like it are made possible by the generous support of those who are able to uh, kick in a little bit on Patreon, those who like and subscribe and make it possible for others to find conversations like these. If you have a moment to do any of those things and are interested, I hope that you will. Regardless, I hope that you find wellness deep inside, whether you have to work hard to achieve it on a regular basis or it's something that comes easy, I'm going to be rooting for you. And I know that you can make it through today Take care, everybody.